what are some of the causes, the root issues that drive people to become um, empty nesters or to be, became, make changes simply because they are empty nesters? Yeah, you know, you work your whole life and you you build a home. And I always think of it as, you know, my wife and I were thinking of our dream home or thinking of our forever home. A lot of people consider and they want to have a home where, you know, they can raise their kids and, and you can have uh, plenty of room and a plenty of room in the yard and you have all this big space. Uh, and then the kids leave. And so when the kids leave and you have all this space, now you have all this space and all this yard and not a lot of, you know, energy or, you know, desire to want to take care of those things or a lot of help to take care of those things. So I think it's a natural thing where people, they think, you know what, I don't need this, but I can still have something that is mine, something that you know, fits our needs now. And so downsizing um, to a smaller space or a smaller yard, things like that make a lot of sense for people. That sounds great on paper. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I have uh, done this for 33 years, so I can tell you it doesn't always work as planned. So I'm going to ask one of the obvious questions. Does, does having less, does having a smaller house or smaller location or moving to a condo or moving to a different location, does that translate directly to savings? No. No. And why <laughs> is that? Well, people are used to a standard of living. And whether you're in a big house or a small house, somehow I think most people are going to end up living at that same standard of living. It's always an ideal thought that, you know what, when I retire, or when I you know, have you know, more time, or I'm just going to spend less. You, you get used to you know, certain fixed expenses that you want to maintain. And whether you're in a big house or a small house, uh, you're probably still going to meet a lot of those things. 